This is part two of debugging Scala-based Spark code in IntelliJ. In this screencast, it's part two, um, builds on part one. It's more advanced in the sense that we're gonna attach a debugger to a remotely running Spark program. Now in this example, we're gonna connect to a, a Spark um, environment that's running on the same machine as IntelliJ, but the same concepts can be applied towards scenarios where you might have a Spark cluster that's running off of your laptop. Now for ease of demonstration, I'm just gonna do it here on my same laptop and I will highlight some of the areas that you will likely need to change for your environment. Even if you're running it locally on your environment, there's some environment variables that you will need to change because I'm using them specifically for my laptop. So as you're watching this, just keep in mind that these are concepts that you can apply to your particular needs and you're gonna to have to modify them in order for it to work, okay? So let's get started. First, we need an environment that we can deploy some Spark code to. So I'm gonna switch over to a terminal here and I'm gonna start up a Spark master. I'm assuming in these screencasts that you know what I'm doing here when I'm starting up Spark, also when I'm starting up a worker as I'm doing now lots of other videos here and elsewhere on starting up Spark. Let's go to the Spark UI. Let's just verify everything is okay. Um, this might come back to haunt us later on. I'll, we'll, come, we'll take a look. Um, so we've got uh, a master and a worker running. Next, let's actually deploy something to this running environment and, and attach a debugger to it. First, let's build in our SBT shell. I'm going down here, SBT shell, we run package. Again, I'm not covering that here. The focus of it, um, of this screencast is attaching a remote debugger. So we've got a jar now and we're able to deploy it. So here's what we need to do in the terminal right next to the SBT shell or outside of IntelliJ if you choose. First set this Spark Submit Ops variable. Now you may need to change it for your particular port. Again, this is for conceptual purposes. Also, I'm not setting any host name here as well. This is so it's gonna assume local. Spark Submit Ops is what we need to set and I'm gonna suspend it to Y. Okay, so now we need to deploy it. And I've got a, that Spark Submit all teed up here, ready to go. Again, your master is going to be different than the one I'm running locally. What happens when we run this locally is the following, you'll see that it's stopped and it's listening on this address. This is due to this Spark Submit option. How do we get this running? Next is we actually configure a debugger to attach to it. So we'll go up here, excuse me, let me take a step back. Up here is in the upper right here. We'll add a configuration, we'll hit this plus button. We'll drive down to remote and we'll give it a name. And the defaults for this example should be good for us. It's on this port, um, and it's going to be list. It's going to be attempting to connect on local host. So this should be good for our environment. Again, as I mentioned, you might need to change this for different environments. I'm going to hit apply, hit OK, and then I'm going to run up here again on the upper right. I'll run it in the debugger. So when I start the debugger, I am uh, things are looking good so far. I've, um, I've moved along in the processing. I've got a debugger stopping at a breakpoint here. And let's hit continue. Good. We've reached the next part of our debugging, or our another, our next breakpoint here, right? Um, so we're, we're moving along. And if we check the terminal, we're seeing that this is further along. So this is achieving what we want to do. We're stopping at breakpoints in a debugger in code that's running out on our external Spark cluster, 
right? So if we hit continue, if we come to terminal, we'll see in the output here some of the output associated with this code here, the print lens, we'll see all that. So we've just successfully connected our debugger to remotely running Spark code. If we come back to our Spark UI, we should see a completed application that we just connected to the skeleton. So there you go. Again, concepts um, that you can hopefully find useful and applying to your environment. If there's any questions, comments, or ideas for improvements, just leave them in the comments below from wherever you're watching the screencast. Thank you.